Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Songs from the Studio. I hope you're all doing well. We're getting close to the finish line with our new song, Love Unselfishly. And I just wanna take a few minutes to go through each of the instruments, just to show you how things are shaping up as we finalize our mix and get ready for release. If you enjoy these videos, please hit the like and subscribe button. We would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Let's start off by just taking a listen to a verse and a chorus so you can hear how things are sounding. Okay, that's how things are sounding so far. I'm happy with how things are shaping up. So let's just go through the individual pieces a little. Now this is not going to be a full in-depth mix breakdown. I really just wanna show kind of the individual pieces, show where we've ended up since the tracking, and then obviously hear it all together. So first off, I have everything laid out on the console. I've got the drums, bass, all the guitars, all the vocals in the middle, and then all my keys over here on the right side. And we're gonna start by taking a listen to our drums. I have a little bit of processing happening on a few elements of the kit. The kick and the snare are both getting the SSL compressor and the Neve 8803 EQ just a little bit. Toms are getting some TX5C compression, but I think the main thing that's happening to the overall kit is really the drum bus compression, which is a Heritage Audio successor going into the EQ5P Tone Lux EQ. Let me just actually play that. I'll turn the, the compressor off because I'm kind of hitting the compressor hard. Normally I would run the successor in blend mode which means I have an unprocessed signal going through and then I have a processed signal going through, so it's a parallel. And usually I would hit it really hard and then just blend that processed sound into the unprocessed. I didn't quite like how that was working on this track, so I decided to hit the drum bus 100% with the compressor and quite hard, as you heard, it's a big adjustment in the snare drum especially, that's probably the biggest thing it brings it forward, but it adds a little bit of life and excitement to the whole kit. And I'm pretty happy with that. I do have a little bit of reverb, and this is one thing I'll talk about more in just a second. I'm only using two reverbs on this entire track. The vocals have one extra thing, but I'm using a short plate from the M3000, which the drums are going to, and I'm sending that from two places. The rooms and the snare are sending a little bit to it. So here is the dry drums. Just 
just enough to make it a little bit wet and give it a little bit of tail and a little bit of depth. That's where I'm at with the drums right now. I'm happy with that. Let's check out some bass. I always love the tone Minnow gets. No matter what amp he plays out of, he gets a great tone. And this time, even though we had the Mini Brute, we decided to drive that a little bit harder so the amp is giving us a little bit of that breakup so I didn't have to do it later because it was not looking to make this clean. And you'll hear that when we get to some of the, the keys and even the vocals that I'm doing things to kind of dirty things up a little bit. I decided not to use the DI. You can see even here on the console, I have it muted and the faders down and it's muted in Logic as well. I just liked the tone of the amp. It gave me what I was looking for. I liked the vibe and the DI didn't add anything one way or the other that made me want to use it. And if it doesn't add anything, I like to just hit the mute button or just turn it off completely. So this is all amp. The bass is getting a little bit of processing from the TS500 Sound Sculptor, adding a little bit of bottom from that and kind of just tightening things up a little bit. And then it's getting the Golden Age Comp 3A Junior, which I really dig on bass. And that's it. It's, so let's take a listen to bass and drums. Guitars. Ernesto's got a few really cool parts in this. So let's just solo his parts here in verse two. And I'm gonna take the second half. I really dig the tones we got on this, and I'm only augmenting them a little bit. The main rhythm, which is on the right, which goes through the whole song, is getting some of the hairball audio blue stripe, and the left rhythm that comes in actually on that verse and then goes through the rest of the song is going through the SSL LMC Plus, which I've never actually used on anything but drums and bass, and it works quite nice. It's kind of transparent, but it does a nice job of just kind of taking a sound and going sitting right there and moving it through the song. The blue stripe, the hairball, adds a little hair to the sound, pun intended, sorry, bad joke. It adds a little bit of grit to the tone that we already had and I liked that quite a bit. Now one cool thing about this funky guitar part right here, that goes really nice with the piano that you're gonna hear in just a second. We'll solo those up. There is a little bit of reverb again happening to the guitars, same reverb as the drums. So let's take a listen dry. Just adding a little bit of tail, a little bit of depth. And I like doing this with my reverbs. I don't like to use uh, a lot of different reverbs on the instrumentation if I can get away with it. Especially if I'm trying to glue something together and make it feel like a single performance the more I can give them all a similar space and then use EQ to kind of differentiate where they sit, that's the way I prefer to work. So let's take a listen to all of our rhythm section elements there so far. Time for some keys. We have two main sounds that happen throughout the song. We have Matt's electric keyboard, which is doing a whirly sound, and we have the acoustic piano. And then I'm augmenting Matt's whirly a little bit. So let's take a listen to, I'm gonna go to the intro so you can kind of hear the, just the keys.
Now you can hear there's a little bit of grit on there and I am using a plugin that as of right now me shooting this video, I can't tell you about. When I can tell you, I will put links everywhere and let you know because I think it's gonna be a really cool plugin. But I'm adding a little bit of grit. So here is without Here's with. As you can see here, I separated the intro, the verse, and the chorus, just so I could adjust the amount of grit. It's much more subtle on the verse, but with the track here, let me go to this, I'm gonna go to the second verse again, and let's pull in the rhythm section and hear it in context. It's actually easier to hear the grit in context. It just pulls the sound a little bit forward where just the plain whirly sound kind of sat a little bit behind everything. And I didn't necessarily mind that, but I also wasn't looking to keep everything you know, clean. I wanted that roughness kind of throughout all the instrumentation. And I really like what this plugin did. And I cannot wait to tell you guys about it whenever that happens. Next up is the piano, so let's take a listen to that. Okay, so this is cool. This, like, four bars before the pre-chorus is really neat. So I'm going to pull in the guitar. Let's roll it back. So this is how the piano and the, the electric guitar work together. I love that. Actually, let's, let's listen to the whole rhythm section there because this really comes together nicely. I love how those two parts work together. So cool. And there's all our instrumentation. All of those instruments, except for the Whirly, are going to that same M3000 reverb. The Whirly is only getting a little bit of reverb from the sound that Matt had when we tracked, so it sits in a little bit different space than everything else. All right, let's get to the main attraction, and that's the vocals, because Sophia, Holy crap, killed it. So let's take a listen to a little bit of this, just the vocal. I can't hide this fire inside of me Just to dim my light for you That very spark attracted you to me She sounds so good, you almost don't need to do it. <laughs> <laughs> to this vocal. So I only did a few things. Now, when we tracked it, I, I briefly went over the, the mic preamp and compressor setup when we tracked. So here's how those turned out. I always split into two different channels with two different treatments. The Day King is always number one. That's my clean channel, so to speak. And here's what that alone sounds like. Let me turn off the effects. I can't hide this fire inside of me. Just to dim my light for you. That for this song, my second channel was the Hairball Audio Blue Stripe 1176. And here's what that sounds like. I can't hide this fire inside of me. Just to dim my light for you. That you can hear there's some obvious, more obvious compression going on there. And a slightly different tone as well. So here are the two together. I can't hide this fire inside of me 
just to dim my light for you. That very and I'm running a little bit more of the Day King channel than the Blue Stripe channel. So in some ways, the Blue Stripe is really my parallel compression. Beyond that, I'm using a little bit of the IGS Tube Core 500 and a tiny bit of the Kush Clairphonic. Just a little bit. One thing I find with doing the vocals this way is I get to a finished sound a lot faster, so I don't have to do as much processing to it once we get into the mix, unless I'm just being creative. And speaking of the creative, there are a couple cool things on here. First off, I am using a little bit of a slapback type delay, and that is coming from a couple guitar pedals. The TC Electronic Echo Brain that's going into the good old Behringer Ultra Chorus of all things. And here is just what that sounds like. I can't hide this fire inside of me Just to dim my life for you that And I am pushing into the echo brain enough to make it start to kind of distort a little bit, which I really dug. So let's hear the lead vocal and that. I can't hide this fire inside of me just to dim my light for you, that very... It's not even really long enough to be a slapback delay. It's just kind of an extension, but you hear a little bit of little depth in there, and it's kind of a gritty depth, which I thought was cool. The reverb is coming from a pair of cascaded quad reverbs, and they sound like this. And this is one quad reverb running into the other. One setting is this diffused kind of chamber sound running into a stereo spread. And here's how all of those elements come together. I can't hide this fire inside of me Just to dim my light for you That very spark attracted you to me All right, what does that sound like in context? Let's take a listen. So now you got a little bit of grit on the vocal, you have a little bit of grit on the keys, you have some grit in the bass, you've got this kind of bombastic sound and everything is kind of cohesive and there's a lot of character in the tones, which is something I was going for right from the beginning of all this. And we do have a few background vocals. I don't know what you want from me. I don't know who you expect me to be. We basically stack the same thing on the left and the right, so there's quite a few channels, but it's really only a couple parts. I am doing a little bit of processing to these background vocals with the Yamaha SPX90 set to pitch change C. So let's hear them without. I don't know what you want from me. I don't know who you expect me to be. Just don't work for me. Can we ever love us? It adds a nice roundness to the sound and a little bit of movement, and it also pushes them out just a little bit wider. So let's listen to that whole chorus now. I absolutely love how those vocals are coming out. It sounds so cool. The last thing I want to cover is the keyboard solo because Matt played a really nice solo. So let's have a listen to that. It 
It's also getting a little bit of that plug-in that I can't talk about right now, just to give it a little bit of grit. And it's also going to the same reverb as the lead vocal. So that's my two reverbs in this whole track. I have the M3000 that all the instruments minus the Whirly are going to. Then I have the cascaded pair of quad reverbs, which is on the lead vocal and the keyboard solo. And that's it for my reverb processing. I think we did a good job of planning ahead with the type of sounds we wanted to record, so they didn't need a whole lot to be interesting in my opinion. Finally, everything is going through the mix bus chain, which is the Smart Research C1, the SSL Ultraviolet EQ, love that, into a pair of Rupert Neve 542 tape emulators, into my Apogee and over to the print machine. And that's it. Everything else you have to wait for the music video to come out, which is gonna be really, really, really soon. That's all the final pieces for Love Unselfishly. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I'm gonna finish up this mix and do some printing and we'll see you in the next video. Take care, everybody.